Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fat Real Estate Checks. My name is Marco Kozlowski and I'm here with Francesco Galluccio and somewhere in this room is Gabriel Araish. Not sure where he is, uh, but he's somewhere that away. I'm upstairs. Yes, he is. And uh, we're delighted to uh, continue the series that we've uh, started uh, a couple weeks ago uh, regarding um, some, some soft skills that are absolutely necessary in uh, listening and conversating and, um, and really listening uh, to how you're going to move um, your, your counterpart into needing uh, to do business with you. Um, in fact, we're going to have a whole podcast on needs and wants, which um, someone just said a minute ago, which I think is extremely valuable. Uh, and of course, if you have not listened to the uh, la the first 10 episodes of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, stop what you're doing right now. Stop it. Stop. Stop listening. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Go to the first 10 episodes. Listen to those immediately so you understand how asset-based lending works because we buy assets using absolutely none of our own money, not because we don't have any, but because we don't need to. And if you structure deals correctly, money is always going to be available uh, at your fingertips. And that is exactly what we do. And that's how we empower people to buy a tremendous amount of units uh, that are at significantly discounted uh, prices, uh, allowing us to step in with no cash. Thank you very much and get paid actually every time we buy an asset. And uh, yeah, so make sure you listen to that. Uh, also the last uh, three, four or five episodes that we've done as well, that was very ambiguous, I know, but uh, I believe it started with uh, mission, vision and purpose. I think you mm -hmm. should start with that one and then move your way forward if you have not listed those first and then uh, get to this one. So I'll wait right here while you start listening to those. Do, 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 do. All right. Welcome back. So uh, we're going to uh, go into uh, whiteboarding, uh, which we've discussed in the last, I think every single episode uh, up to now, but now we're really going to get into what whiteboarding is. Might have already let the cat out of the bag there in other previous episodes. So this might be a very short episode where we'll describe it and just say, thanks for joining us. See you later uh, or not. Uh, with Frank on the call, it's impossible to do that, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll eventually get there. Frank says what he wants to say, and that's why we love Frank so fucking much. He's an amazing human. He is. He is. He really is. Um, so yeah. So what was that noise? Did you guys hear that? Doorbell. Really? No. Yeah. Oh, was <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think it was. Was it? <laughs> Pretty oh. sure. Someone's at my door. Uh, I hope you're expecting company. Maybe it's a package. Uh, Maybe it's a good package. We'll see what happens. We'll see. It is. It's a check. It's, it's all, it's gotta be a check. It's, it's gotta, gotta be, be a well, check. Well, you guys are, you guys are assuming. Uh, it's, it's, it's my social are, security you check. Assuming, right? It's my yes. welfare check. All oh, right, we got a whiteboard. You got a whiteboard. You guys are making assumptions now. <laughs> ah, ah, Francesco true. learns quickly. He talks a lot, but he learns faster. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Very, very good. Excellent. Well, well said, yes. sir. Well said. So, um, yeah. So that's exactly what this whiteboarding stuff is all about. Is is coming in with absolutely a blank slate. We should have brought the whiteboard. Zero, <laughs> zero <laughs> assumptions, and just being open and white. Uh, uh, just uh, you know, just a completely white face of no, nothing on the board at all, right? Nothing, right. zero. Just like when you you know you buy a brand new whiteboard, it's it's clean, and before you start a new uh, brainstorming session, for example, you're you're gonna start with a blank slate, and that's it. That's that's exactly how you have to approach, uh, you know, a, a conversation with your counterpart. I'll, I'll be the you come from yeah. a place of it's a blank slate. And you'll be no, the first to, 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 to see that's a very difficult thing to do. It's it's not as easy as yes. you're implying to come with a clean I slate understand. because we have uh, like if you, l you listen to the previous uh, um, uh, podcast, we have Episode. a lot of baggage and we have a lot of pre preconceived notions about everything. We still do it. We're like human. We're like, no, they're not going to come lower or no, they're not going to do this or no, I don't think they're going to come to our, you know, to come to our party because last time what happened. So we always have those assumptions in mind. So. <laughs> What happened last time, Frank? Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to come to our party again. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it, as humans, you're going to have that. It's a very difficult thing to do to, you know, uh, clean the slate, like completely white what you're saying. Uh, but it, well, I, it's not, it doesn't even have to be in real estate. It, it can be in any 
uh, environment, whether it's your, your work, you know, people say, Oh, I'm not going to ask for a raise because my boss is going to say, forget it. But we always come with that. So how do you, how do you get over that hurdle? How about that? Well, even with counter opposite sex, you know, I don't even want to ask her out because she's going to say no. Mm -hmm. Right. Or she's not going to like someone like me or that's where it really starts. Correct. Right. Is, is the rejection, uh, and it might not have anything to do with you. That's like, uh, honestly, like a con she might yeah. like, but, well, but it's true. She might like girls, right? Well, but that's right. That. So what I'm saying yeah. is that, it, 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 it's, it's, it, or she's busy. She just can't see you that time. Right. And, or, or, or he, you know, maybe he doesn't like, you know, girls, he likes boys, whatever. So it's, it's just, we have these, these things Wonder, that are playing on in our head yeah. and that we're, we already know how the movie's going to end without actually starting the movie. Well, we think it's, we, we think we know how it's well, going to end. Yes. We think we know, but, but, yeah. but because we don't do anything, we actually behave like we know what's going to happen. So we don't even do it. But let's, let's, let's just take a step back. And, Which is we, not whiteboarding. We want to define whiteboarding first. And that's kind of where I was trying to, to, to do is. I interrupted. That, sorry. White, when we say whiteboarding is just starting from a clean slate coming in with no judgments, no, just coming from a place of curiosity, just like when you brainstorm, right? You, you, when you brainstorm, what's the first thing they tell you? It's just, just say things and write them down and don't worry about, you know, what it's going to end up. It's just like throwing paint at a canvas, right? It, just do it. And then from there, you can start piecing the puzzle. So that's, that's what we mean when we say whiteboard it or, 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 you know, whiteboard something or start with a whiteboard. That's what we mean. It's got to be a clean slate. It's got you come from a place of no judgments, no, no, no assumptions, get into the conversation and then you're going to start asking questions which are coming from a place of curiosity rather than of, of you know, pinpointing or judgment. So that's what whiteboarding is. With zero biases, zero, none. which is not easy to do as, yeah. you know, and the older you, you get for sure. Right. <clears throat> well, and where we were going with this with dating, if you come in with a whiteboard and start just asking questions, right? And not, not even go, because you're thinking about the date, mm -hmm. you're already dead in the water. If you're just starting off with, just ask this one question and then ask, and then go to the next question. And suddenly that turns into interest in dating and love, right? So it's, it's, it's like a headline. Yeah. Right. So you start with a headline that gets you to read the next thing that gets you to read the next paragraph that gets you to the next paragraph. And suddenly you're busting out your credit card and you're buying something. So, um, and that, that's called, that's actually whiteboarding yeah. because you don't know anything about what's going on. And then suddenly you're wrapped into this, the, the copy or what's being said or the book, right? You have no preconceived ideas about the book and you start with the first few words and then suddenly you're reading the whole book. Right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and that's, that's, um, that's the mark of a, uh, of a well put together, a book or a movie or, or yeah. process, article, whatever. Yeah. For, Whatever, right? But it's whiteboarded in front of you, but you're just, you're the counterpart at this point. Correct. So be that book, be that movie. Start just with a one, and, but but you have to, again, you're, there's nothing wrong with, um, uh, how am I going to say this without being confusing to myself? Because I have a lot of thoughts going into my head, my ADHD. I'm getting all excited about this. I'm having a problem just actually okay. being Be careful. You're going on a straight and narrow path, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm about to explode. Bakum, uh, <laughs> but, but going on the headlines uh, on that, maybe it'll trigger your, your, your memory there and all your thoughts, but going on the headlines, you're absolutely right. It, so when you, it, from a real estate perspective, just let, let's call it from a real estate perspective where you have, you know, a 10 unit, 50 unit for sale for X amount, whatever. Um, uh, we, we do see, and I'm just as guilty. You do see a lot of students and even myself, they have a, pre a preconceived motion that they're selling for X, Y, Z reason, or they're trying to come up with um, solutions already that the seller doesn't really necessarily have that problem. So they're coming up with the, they're coming up with the prescription even before they know what the problem is. And, and that's what I think the whiteboarding is, is don't prescribe before you know, you know, the issues or the symptoms and the problem. Yeah. Well, when, when someone first starts, for example, you know, we have cat ones, cat twos and cat threes, right? And cat threes are some, someone that's asking some uh, 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 a price tag significantly above retail, which is where all the money is made, by the way, you know, where people are asking uh, above retail is our sweet spot. And as I'm teaching a class, I was just doing some edits uh, last night till um, the wee hours of the morning. Pretty excited about the project that we have going on. Um, I, I heard someone say, okay, well, if it's, you know, if it's a cat one, then all right, then it's game on because it's a deal, right? So they've already had the preconceived idea 
or they've no longer whiteboarded that it's not a deal or a category three is pass, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's, that can't turn into something. So by having that attitude of, oh, because they're asking for more, there's no deal here. They've already ruined their whiteboard. They've already tarnished it because they have a belief already without even starting the conversation that it's, it's, it, there's no opportunity here. So they're, they're either going to be geniuses at the negotiation process because they're so, they, there's a belief that they're no longer fin emotionally invested, which is how you have to be, right? Which is a whole other conversation mm -hmm. um, to, re you know, remove that emotion, emotion and that need to stop not being needy. Or they're just going to not really focus on it at all, which is most likely the case, and drop it because their their notion is not to find out what the problem is, to find a solution. And the only way to do that is by asking a tremendous amount of questions so you can put it on your whiteboard. But whatever your beliefs are should never go on that whiteboard. It's so, only the counterparts. So, sorry. so that no, don't let me sorry. So that's I'm sorry. The sorry thing is, is for for, being sorry. for a whiteboard to be effective, we actually need to take a step back and maybe you need to explain the needs versus wants, right? Because it's impossible to have a blank slate if you come from a place of neediness. If like, and, and again, if let's use your example of, let's say, you, you, you know, if, if a guy's gonna ask, you know, this girl out or that's his intention, if he goes from a place of, hey, I'm just gonna ask and whatever the outcome is, I'm gonna be okay with it, rather than say, I need to go on a date or I need to this, that's it gonna be easier for him to blank slate that and come in and just ask the question because, he, he'll just, if, you know, she says yes, great. If she says no, well, that's fine too. And then I'll go, you know, we'll go ask someone else to the dance or whatever Numbers it is. Game. Yep. So, so, but it, it, you, you can't have a white board if you are needy. It, I don't think that's possible. It, it, it's, a, you know, that's kind of like saying that it's, it's, you, you use the, if you have needs or if you're need, you're needy, it's like using a permanent marker on a whiteboard. I, I don't think that you can erase that that's or you need to erase it. And so, so that's important. Maybe we, we need to do the, so we, we need, we need to do the, the next podcast yes. needs versus wants, but, yeah. uh, I, I, I don't think that's possible. Well, some people Good on point. their whiteboard have a whiteboard, but at the bottom they had the footnotes, what Marco was saying, cat three pass cat one, let's go. Right. Mm -hmm. So whether they have it on a footnote in very small font or in their, in their head, that's what they're thinking because they're going in thinking that way. But, uh, again, it's it's a hard thing to shake, but if you really clear your mind and say let let's get to the root of the issue, because there's a reason why that person's selling. There's a reason, and and the more you can peel that onion back and find out what that reason is and how can I serve that person, um, and and you know leave your ego out of it, saying I need to get a deal. But I listen, I get it. People are anxious. They're emotional. Um, you know, they wanted to get into real estate. They wanted they they they. they they want to get into the program so they can buy real estate so they can, you know, quit their job. And you come with baggage and you come with you, you have your own why, uh, basically, why you're doing this. But you got to You got to serve the, the seller first. And to do that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult. But you got to put aside, listen and don't even come to pre conclusions, even when they say one or two things, because uh, sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, and we have a lot of stories around that where it, money wasn't even the issue money wasn't even the issue and they were asking like double the price uh, and i think we talked about that on, mm -hmm. on a previous podcast but well it was it was it was tax not how much money they got but how much had yes they, they take care of the, yeah yeah how much what was left but how are you going to help someone like how are you going to help someone if you don't have the if you don't ask the right questions first of all this is not about how are you ever going to get a deal how are you going to make money how are you going to serve somebody else because at the end of the day all money is is a result of helping another human or a business right is service. It comes through service. Service exchange for cash. We deliver a good service in in our in our bars. You know, our our our, our bartenders get very well tipped, right? The difference between someone we have got data on this. Uh, those that serve quickly get on average about a fifteen percent tip, and those that actually give uh, just a few extra seconds of time to recognize your patron, thirty six percent, and more oh, than wow. doubles. For one extra second, you double your tip, two extra seconds, just recognition, conversation, a smile, you know, even when you're slammed, that two extra seconds to whiteboard and to recognize and say, acknowledge in their universe that they're important, right? Mm -hmm. Doubles your, your, the returns. And that's something that they didn't understand until we, sh they saw it and they understood it. And now that's, which elevates the service of the bar, right? Which now elevates their experience, which creates more customers. So it's, it's, and again, 
it's all about not because the bartenders are thinking I want to make more money, mm -hmm. not how can I serve better. Correct. But so, but because they're focused on the money, they're not serving better. If because now they're focused on the customer, it has nothing to do with the bartender. They actually get more money by by really focusing on your on the counterpart. Right. I know, no, Frank, you want to say about, something. We I can tell well, you, ah, because ah, we did talk about ah, this. I remember time equity. I think we talked about this, or maybe we didn't talk. Maybe we talked about it, but we, we didn't did. do a podcast we did. on it. But no, Frank, you talked about it. We were just we were okay. Then I right talked there. about it. Time equity. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it goes to your point that that bartender that takes a moment to understand, uh, okay, Gabe doesn't drink to understand your needs, Marco. Right? Well, he actually does drink. He likes grappa. So yeah, whatever. He does. He likes. Uh, you like yeah. tequila. Like so, anyways, for for that for that extra moment, thirty seconds to speak to. No, it's uh, two seconds. Oh, it's two, two seconds. seconds. Even, you know, that's, in that that's, context, it's, yeah. it's not even a moment. It's not. A, it's not a minute. It's it take two extra seconds. Look at him in the eye and just smile and everything good. Oh yeah, it it, it just increase like. That That's crazy small stats. interaction. That's crazy stats. Yeah, it doubles their tips more than doubles. So fifteen to thirty six percent. It it it's and it's stupid for them not to, right? And what's the difference? Two seconds. Well, wow. no, it's <laughs> but serving, it's serving. it's no, it's 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 putting it's, yourself it's, in their world. It's, it's putting themselves mm -hmm. in their world yeah. and white. Honestly, it's whiteboarding. It's like what? How are you? What's going on? It's 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 it's, it's asking a the right question. Right, which I think is our next podcast, asking the right questions to be able to post on your whiteboard, because it's not about the if if you're focused on making more money, and you're not really interacting with a person that's there, you're not adding a lot of value, so you don't get paid as much. But as soon as you start interacting with them in their world and asking them how they are, what's going on with you, how can I help you? What's I, I see you, I recognize you, you have value, big smile, the the game changes. They feel recognized and important. There's nothing worse. I, I, I don't go bar. I, now I, I own a bar, but it sucks when you can see people that are just at the bar in other bars because it won't happen at ours where no one's recognized. It's like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Everyone's so busy. They're focusing on trying to help the customers, but they're not really creating a, a, an experience with the customer, which completely changes That's everything it, the else. Experience. People remember experience 100%. Yeah, but the experience is because you want, but, uh, uh, Frank, if you go to somewhere where they took care of you, Right, you enjoy going to Disney, for example, because Disney gives you a good experience. But Disney isn't talking about Disney all the time. They're they're trying to give you an experience. Correct. They're whiteboarding you constantly. Exactly. What does a customer want? They put it on the board, and that's what they deliver for the customer, not for Disney. Absolutely. But Disney happens to make billions at the same time, and that's the point. Mm -hmm. No, I like that experience because it, it is it, it is an experience. It is an adventure, and it's revolved around that that person's uh, universe uh, regarding their environment and. They feel special. In, in the end, they feel special. They go, okay, they, this person's got my best interest at heart. Uh, I'm game. And they're going to open up, and then you can start filling up your whiteboard with, you know, you know, why selling? What's the problem? You know, what are you trying to do? And, you know, get to that nugget where, okay, well, maybe we can help you. Maybe we can't. And if you can't, you can't. And you'd be very transparent about that. So where does Frank or Gabe, where does Frank or Gabe or Marco fit in any seller wanting or needing to sell, honestly? Well, we don't know until it, we it doesn't. The question. We don't. We don't. We, it's we, irrelevant. We're, we're irrelevant. So for someone to say they're not going to want to sell to me or it's not going to happen, you don't matter. So, who? You're not that important, Marco. Why'd you say that? But you're right. Well, it's you know, true. You're, right. you're not you're that right. important. You know, your e your I ego know. is stopping you from doing something when you're not going to do it anyway. But you're not that important. They are. So make them important. Yeah. Put them on the pedestal. Right? The but the only way you're going to do that is is to whiteboard. whiteboard. Yeah. Not even pedestal. Just. Whiteboard. Whiteboard. That's it. Ask questions. Put on a whiteboard. Nothing to do with me. The more you're, you're, the more you're focused on them, the better questions you're going to ask. The more you listen, the less you realize it's about you. The easier it is going to be to whiteboard because everything that's put on that whiteboard is actually going to be pieces to the puzzle that are going to solve their problem mm -hmm. at the end of the day. There's nothing that you're going to say that they don't. You don't know what their problem is. Unless you ask them what it is. And once you know what it is and have all the symptoms on the board, then your experience or piggybacking on our experience will be able to tell you what the problem is to help the, 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 the solve the problem. And that is what's going to make you wealthy. Like doctors, the best white borders. Usually. Yeah. Uh, some of them. Until the big pharma came yeah. in, but that's. Not. No, but in the context of asking questions when you walk in, you're, 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 it's like you're a new patient every time, even if they just saw you, right? Yeah. And, and they ask you questions. What hurts? Where does it hurt? You know? Et cetera, et cetera. What's and the then, problem? Yeah. Yeah. How long has it been going on? Like who, Correct. when, where, how, you know, it's just the, yeah. the big questions, which is, I think our next topic. Sure. So 
wrap this to uh, to put this in a nice little uh, little bow, uh, Mr. Francesco Galluccio. Basically, serve others when you're serving others. You know, don't come with any preconceived notions, thoughts, assumptions. Uh, let them speak. Figure out what all your their symptoms are, why they're selling, and and then come with a, a prescription if you can help them. Um, be a kid, basically. Uh, like you said, I like that. Yeah, it's just that curiosity. Uh, bring back the curiosity. Um, too bad there's no pill for that, but uh, we forget to because uh, to bring that curiosity back. But be curious. Uh, get into you know, get into their world, get into their environment on, you know, and figure out what their symptoms are, what their issues are, and hopefully you can uh, you know come with a solution to them. And if they don't, and if you can't, then that's okay too. But as long as you try coming what? from that angle. Well, if you can, then find someone that that, can, that has the expertise that can. Absolutely, right? yes. Mm -hmm. Because just because you can't doesn't mean it's not possible. It's just you don't have the skill sets to yeah. do it. Correct. I was right? I was putting my I, ego I, up front and thinking <coughs> me. I was thinking me that if I can't, yeah, yeah. that was wrong of me. <laughs> Whiteboarded. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, well, no, but, no, but, no. But, but no, it's right. But, it's but, like yeah. If I can't, it's, it's if like I can't the, solve it, well, hold on. It's a, you made a good point. If I can't solve it, who you can? can. Right. Who, not how. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's who can, who can figure this out. Right. Yeah. Cause if I can't, who can, because there's some things that I don't know how to do. Like we have legal problems or we want to do a PPM or we want to get uh, a money raiser. We want to get uh, you know, I need a new bartender or I need this. I need that. Well, who can help me? Who, who's going to do this for me? Who's going to do that for us, for the organization, you know, not necessarily for me, but for the organization. <clears throat> but, and again, it's if, if it, you can either choose to try to figure everything out but you're not whiteboarding because honestly you want everything on that board. You know, what's, if I was no longer here, cause that's a really sign of a good entrepreneur, right? Is not being involved in the business at all. Yep. You know, creating the business, not to, to work in it, but just to be completely separated from it and work. You know, if they have to, most very successful people, if they have to do something, they're not doing it. They're not going to open up that business. Right. If I have to do anything, I'm not doing it. Wow. So it's like being a parent, right? I mean, your business is like your child. Eventually, you want it to be able to run on its own without your involvement. I mean, you can be there, but ultimately, you're going to go at one point and the child needs to be able to survive on its own. So it's the same thing. Kids are always going to come yeah. back. They need some money. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. On that, hap on that happy note, I appreciate <laughs> you as a listener. Frank, thanks. <laughs> Gabe, thanks. Uh, uh, like it, love it, share it, subscribe. And, uh, if you, uh, if you can actually, you had this idea in the last podcast. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you want to share this, uh, this idea with our listener? Well, I mean, just anything that you hear here, try it, try it and try it in your real world, whether it's in real estate or, you know, and anything else, whether it's when you're discussing with any other counterpart, try these, these skills and, and take notes and let us know how you do it. You're, you're probably going to fail a lot at the beginning, which is great. And that's what we want to know about, because if you tell us how you failed, we can tell you or help you with potentially, you know, what, what, what mistake you made. And then see if you can try that again while, while making some tweaks, because you're never going to get this right at the first, the, the first try. I mean, I, I know we didn't, <laughs> it, it probably took us longer than most would anyways. We're, we're, we're not that good, well, slow. but yeah, really slow. Uh, but try it out and, and send us an email with your, you know, your story and we'll, we'll, we'll probably put it on the air and yeah. just let, let you know what, uh, and just tell us also if you want us to use your name or not, that's, that's up to you. We can make that anonymous as well. Uh, but you know, if whatever it is that you tried, let us know and, uh, let us know how you uh, succeeded or failed or failed miserably, which is even better. Yeah, and then that. we can, we can, we can help you out. So send that to where Marco at Marco .com. That's a great idea. Marco at Marco .com. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And if you don't practice this shit, nothing's ever going to happen. It's practice, 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 and celebrate the fact that you make a mistake. If you don't make a mistake, you'll never grow. So we celebrate mistakes around here. It's never bad. It's always delightful because <clears throat> the more mistakes you make that you learn from, the wiser you become. The only reason why we're here is because we've made more mistakes than most. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, and appreciate you as a listener, again, to listen, uh, to uh, to pay attention to uh, give us uh, the, the amount of five star reviews that we have and we if you haven't already I'd love for you to contribute to that if not that's fine don't worry about it uh, really appreciate uh, being a loyal listener appreciate you uh, Frank and Gabe as well for adding a tremendous value to my life and to the life of others and uh, yeah uh, whiteboard 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 
and don't have your preconceptions or, or judgments impede the process of you really helping and serving as many humans as possible. Uh, because that really at the end of the day is true wealth uh, when you start giving back uh, and adding value to everyone that you touch. And that that is real wealth. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Toodles. If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for life starts by finding deals, and it's easier than you think. Simply go to getdealsbytuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, this course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to getdealsbytuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.